Hello, I am blatantly not Katie MacDonald. My name is Lee Hall and I teach journalism at the University of Sunderland. And I've got 10 top tips for you today on how to shoot some video ahead of coming in to edit it. And the first thing I should say is do as I say, not as I do, because obviously I am talking down to a MacBook with a really boring background. So try not to do that. It doesn't look very good. So tip number one is to make sure that you shoot landscape and not portrait so that you don't get ugly black lines down the side of your video. Um, you can get rid of them in the edit, but they'll end up just, you'll end up having to zoom in really close and sort of the picture quality will deteriorate even further. Tip number two, frame your shots carefully and I'll put a couple of examples, I'll drop them onto this video uh, for you to see, hopefully you're seeing them now, if I've delivered on my promise. Um, if you uh, frame the photo, frame the image with uh, too much background, then the subject, whoever you, who's being interviewed, will look really isolated and it'll look really boring. If you get too close to the foot to the person, as I kind of am now, you're going to start losing vital body parts, like the top of the head, or in my case, the hair. I'm losing a bit of that but anyway. Um, so be careful what you do. And um, there's a few standard shots that we use in video, uh, like the mid shot and also the close up. And it, as a general rule, the closer you get to somebody's eyes, the more kind of emotional and emotive the, the video becomes. So tip number three is uh, try to shoot your interviews with the subject looking across the camera as if they're speaking to an interviewer. Uh, you'll find, or as you're, you're experiencing now, when people speak down the camera, I'm kind of looking at myself rather than into the camera. I'm looking directly into it now. It's really weird, and people don't like that. Um, similarly, if you frame people incorrectly and they are looking, um, instead of looking across the camera as if they're speaking to an interviewer, so instead of doing this, if they look out the other way, like this, it looks like... They're either mad or they're trying to escape, and, and hopefully that's not true. Tip number four is to hold the camera still. Sounds obvious, but it's amazing just breathing in, in almost imperceptible movements will be picked up by the camera. So if you need to, lean against something. You know, Just uh, try and prop yourself up, make sure the camera's still. Don't go crazy. Don't start panning and zooming in. If you need to, if you need to change the shot with fairly basic kit, get closer, move further away, keep still. Um, tip number five is that audio is crucial. In a way, audio is more important than video because video is kind of easier to, the, the, the visual side of things, easier to kind of lag later and kind of reshoot more easily. With the audio, you need to ideally use a microphone. If you haven't got access to that, stack the odds in your favor. Don't shoot in a noisy space. Don't shoot outside where it's windy because on a fairly low-end camera that wind's going to make horrible racket and it's going to be impossible to hear what's going on. Tip number six is to shoot some establishing shots and cutaways. Now what these are are um, shots that aren't necessarily about the key action. Establishing shots may show some context as in you know the building that you're in or, or a sign that explains the sort of environment that you're in. Uh, cutaways are kind of spare shots, if you like, that you can use to mix up the visuals. So if you've got a lot of cutaways and say somebody like me, um, if I haven't done it, I don't know how much time I'll have to edit this, but I should have dropped in some images or some other footage uh, to keep it interesting. Uh, if you just have one person speaking down a camera, it gets really, really boring. So get plenty of spare, sh spare shots. Uh, number seven, you, tip number seven, you might want to record some voiceover. The really easy way to do this is to shoot video because we can separate the video and audio later. So don't worry about shooting you know, with a lens cap on a camera or whatever it is. That's fine. We can separate that later as long as you capture the audio. Tip number eight, be creative. Um, don't just do this. Don't just shoot one boring angle. Um, try and find an interesting angle. Um, you might want to shoot the same interview from a few different angles and choose different shots just to make it look more visually interesting. People have short attention spans, so keep them interested. Tip number nine is make sure that you have absolutely everything you need to put that video together before you come to Sunderland. What you don't want to do is find out that you've forgotten to shoot this or get the voiceover or you don't know what you're doing. You need to have it all together so you know what you're going to do. Tip number ten uh, is to storyboard the video before you arrive. In other words, know what shots you're going to need, 
uh, ideally review the footage, make a note of where in that footage the um, the shots take place. So there's a good good quote or a good establishing shot or whatever you know where it is, so you can get it quickly. You don't waste time scrabbling around, scrubbing through the footage to find it. And just as a, a bonus tip and, and a really obvious one, um, I hope, well, hopefully not too obvious, use YouTube. Um, look for tutorials. I mean, I've done 10 quick tips here. There's loads of stuff on there about how to shoot sequence, little tricks that you can use if you've got no money or no resources or no kit to make your shots look interesting. And of course, you can just get great ideas for great shots. So good luck. See you soon. Goodbye.